Hey, what's up guys? Cam K and Grass-Fed Marketing. So I'm just out for a walk and enjoying kind of the quiet, listening to some audiobooks, um, taking some notes in my moleskin as I'm, you know, kind of thoughts are coming to me and then I'm brainstorming about new things that I want to do this year and, and ways that I can serve the clients that I have and, and through Grass-Fed Marketing especially, ways that I can serve all of you and the students that are taking our courses and are watching our videos and using the strategies and tactics that I've been sharing in their business. And, and so this is an important part of, you know, just about every single day, at least six days a week, um, I do this. I just go for a walk by myself, kind of the middle of the day usually, um, about noon or one or two, and just to be alone. Right now I'm right next to a, a stream, a little coming out of the canyon here by American Fork, Utah. And, you know, I wanted to share some tips and, and, and something that I've been thinking about a lot that I, that I think will, if you'll implement it in your business, will really help you. And that is um, to test the things that you've already done, right? So the first thing that I do when I come in and consult for a business is before we talk about, you know, all the new things and the novelty approaches and the innovations that we could implement in the business, um, I have this, it's a pretty significant checklist of a couple hundred questions. And we go through this, this checklist and we look at, and we identify all the things that the business owner is already doing well, all of the things that are already working. And they might not be working that well, but here's why we do this before we implement anything new, before we shake things up. It's because in order to do the new things, in order to innovate and try and test new strategies, tactics, and methods, new advertising, let's say, or marketing, um, we need to make sure that the business is, continues to produce um, strong profits, right? That that cash flow holds steady, that it's consistent, and that it actually increases during the time that we implement these new things. And so it's really kind of a buffer or a, I don't want to call it a safety net, but it is a hedge against um, the inevitable kind of ups and downs of testing new ideas in your business. Because um, while just about every single tactic that we would try in a business will work and does work and produces results, the way that we implement it, right, the copy that we use, the images that we use, um, the way that it's presented, whether that's through a newsletter or something that we mail to, to people at home or an email or a Facebook post, like the, the way that we communicate this new marketing tactic or the value that the business offers, you know, that is what we're going to play with and that's what we're going to kind of fiddle with to find the optimal kind of delivery mechanism. And so in order for us to do that, we have to have that consistent cash flow. And that cash flow, um, it needs to be... And, and, so, and so before we, we do all the new stuff, we have to optimize the things that are already working. And like I said at the beginning, even if they're not working that well, it's super important that we improve on those things because we don't want to take away... We don't want to take away the things that are working in the business, right? And at the end of the day, ultimately, in the long term, um, maybe a year from now or six months or three months or five years, the things that the business owner that you are doing right now that we're going to optimize, we might do away with them altogether, but not at the beginning, right? But later we might because as we experiment and adopt and implement these new and innovative solutions and marketing strategies and advertising strategies into your business, um, we will certainly find ones that return to you a profit or a cash flow, a sales number, your target outcome that is 2x or even 10x. Um, the results that your current strategies, methods, and tactics are producing. But for now, we're going to optimize the ones you're already doing. And then, as we go, little by little, we'll introduce the new things. So um, here's what you can do, right? To, to, to kind of, you don't need to hire me. You don't need to hire anyone. You, don't, you can do this yourself, all right? Um, certainly, there is a value to having people around you, to assembling a team, uh, whether that's a team that you employ or that you contract with, that you partner with, or mentors that you go out and find. There is incredible value there to surrounding yourself with people who um, maybe are strong where you are weak or are, you know, have uh, experience where you lack experience. Um, a lot of value there for sure. But if you're just getting started or you're small or you're hesitant or you're fearful or, you know, wherever you are, if you're just not ready to bring someone else on, then you can absolutely do these things in your business. And here's what I would do. Here's what I would say to you. If you're not ready to hire someone or to, um, to go you know, hire an agency or hire employees or, or take one of my more expensive but super high value courses, um, the very first thing you want to do is to optimize what you're already doing is to, t to test your headlines. And the headline is, 
um, typically we're talking about if the, you know the headline is that the, the the very top of your copy, whether that's a, if it's a newspaper ad, it's the big, it's big and bold, and it, it it's meant to capture attention, right? It's meant to to get people to pay attention, to notice, and to read the rest of the of the of the ad or the of the copy. Um, but a headline is not just a written um, headline. A headline is the first kind of the first communication, the first exclamation that a prospective customer comes in contact with your business. So a headline could be it's the very first thing that you say at a farmer's market, right, to introduce yourself as someone is walking by. Um, hey, do you like grass-fed beef? Um, hey, uh, um, well, that <laughs> I don't actually have a good one. I don't like farmer's markets. I'm not sure why I use that as an example. Just that I guess a lot of producers love farmer's markets. Um, I do not like them at all. Having said that, if you do farmer's markets, um, and in a lot of videos I talk about how you should do away with farmer's markets and not touch them at all, but um, following in line with this video, before you get away, you know, do away with them and eliminate them from your business, optimize them, right? So before you go, you get rid of farmer's markets if that's what you're doing and it's supporting your business, um, figure out how to do farmer's markets so that you sell twice as much beef every time you go. Figure out a way to do farmer's markets so that you get three times as many email subscribers that sign up there at your booth every time you display at a farmer's market. Figure out how to do farmer's markets in a way that you pre-sell your beef before you even show up. And so people are, are just are simply showing up not to hear about you for the first time and not to buy from you, just to pick up the beef they've already paid for. Um, so you can use them as a delivery location. Figure out how to use farmer's markets to, you know, three, four, five, six X, your, the, the sales that you're getting right now from farmer's markets. And then once you've done that, then let's implement some new stuff. So, um, but test your headlines. That's the very first thing that you can optimize. Um, test the, the headline and then the call to action. So what are you, ac what, what action are you inviting your prospective customer to take? And, and that is actually, um, that's a whole separate video. That is such an important thing that is so overlooked in business. It's um, in, in every industry, in every time that there is a business owner that is offering a product or service to the market and should be asking for a sale, um, hardly anybody does. And without giving them something specific to do, your prospective customer, the person you're trying to sell to, you have to be explicit and tell them what you want them to do. Um, and that's not salesy and it's not pushy, that's just being assertive and that's caring about your business more than you do about potentially like annoying someone like that that's actually a good one to talk about i think a, lo a lot of business owners worry that they're going to annoy or bother or even offend um, people by asking them to buy their products and that couldn't be further from the truth first of all um, if it were true it would be a good thing because you want to identify as fast as possible the people who don't want to buy from you the people who have zero interest in what you're selling so if you're at a farmer's market Ask every single person that walks by to come up and sample your beef or to come up and learn how you raise your beef or come up and learn how, you know, you're a third generation farmer and meet your, your son that's there, you know, carving up some ribs or cooking up some sliders or like, but, but, but when you communicate with people, like give them something to do, right? Tell them what you want them to do. Um, in your emails, like don't just send out an email, like provide value in your emails, obviously, and I've talked about that in other videos extensively, but also include a call to action. Include like, say, here's what to do next, right? Um, if, 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 you, if you can't make it, let's say, let's say you have like a, buyers, like a beef buyers club that you do uh, weekly deliveries to a certain location and throughout the week people can, can pre-order their beef and then pick it up you know, every Saturday at you know, this parking lot or at someone's house. So you send out an email that says, you know, if you can't make it, tell me and I will save your beef. I'll save a, a package for you for next week. Like that's still a call to action. That is, you're giving them something very specific and you're also qualifying heads up if you can't make it, right? So all of a sudden the people that are reading your email that go, oh man, I won't be here this week. They go, oh, they're talking to me and they're, they're, they're giving me a clear, like a definitive action to take so that I can get the result that I want. And the result that I want, the benefit, the value, is I want this person's beef because I've got a family dinner in two weeks and so I need to make sure that I can get it. Man, I was worried there. How did they know I wasn't gonna be able to make it? So point being, tell people what to do. Give them actions to take and they will take them. If you don't ask them to buy, if you don't ask them to subscribe to your email list, if you don't ask them to follow your Facebook page or to um, follow you on Instagram or to leave a comment or to tag a friend or to share your email or to share a promotion or a post or to enter a giveaway, whatever it is, if you don't give them an action to take and make a request, they will not do it. Um, they're not mind readers, okay? And 
the way that you can provide the most value to your customers is to give them something to do. It is to help them get more of your product. If you really believe in what you are offering the marketplace, if you really believe that your grass-fed beef is the healthiest option, it's the best, the highest quality option out there, and it's one that the customer can trust, right? They can trust their health to, they can trust the health of their children and their family with, then you have an obligation to help that customer who wants what you have to get what you have and to get as much of it as they can, right? You have an obligation to not let them buy in a smaller amount or less frequently than they absolutely, that, than they need, than they want, right? Then is best for them, okay? Um, and think about it this way. Like you do have an obligation to help them to make it as easy as possible for them to get as much of your product as they need, all right? Um, and think about it this way. Maybe they, they're trying to stick to a diet and they have a habit of eating out. The husband has a habit of eating out on the way home from work, right? He'll grab a quick burger at a fast food place on the way home. And comes home around 6.30, grabs a, grabs a quick burger um, just to... Um, but since they heard about your product and your farm, now the, they, they buy your beef. And so every night he has, you know, he looks forward to going home and getting on the, his Traeger grill or on his George Foreman or in a skillet and cooking up his own uh, burger. Okay, um, if you haven't helped your customer purchase all of the beef from you that they want and that they need, there will come a time when that husband is going home and he knows that they are, they're out of beef because they missed last week's group order, they missed last week's delivery, or they were out of town or just slipped their mind because you didn't make it easy enough for them to buy and to maintain a full freezer. And, and so he's going to come home going, oh man, I don't have any beef at home. I guess I'm just going to, I'll have to stop by Wendy's and grab this. I, don't, I really don't want it. And now all of a sudden he's associating your, your beef and the absence of your product in, in, in his home with him breaking his diet and him feeling, um, well, feeling badly. So I don't want to get too deep into that because we could go into a big, dark, deep tunnel on human psychology and all the ways that... Um, that uh, our brains tell us stories and, and, uh, and help us and hurt us, but uh, we won't do that right now. Just know that if you believe in what you're offering and you, you really understand the value that your customer gets from purchasing your product, then you do have an obligation to help them to make it as easy as possible for them to get as much of it as they want and as they need in their life. And the way that you do that is by being very explicit in your requests, in your asks. You need to ask for the sale, ask them to take action. And if you are just getting started, one easy way to test, to optimize the current practices that you're engaging in for marketing and advertising, start with your headline. Change your headline. Test it. See which headline um, pulls a higher percentage, a higher conversion of email subscribers, of buyers, of whatever action it is that you are trying to get your prospect to take. Test the headline. Test the body copy after that. Test the image. Test the call to action. Um, but test one variable at a time. Do not test more than one thing because with, with, you have to test one thing. When you test more than one thing, it becomes too confusing and there's no real way to accurately gauge what is working the best and, and performing at the highest and, and the things that aren't. So just test one variable at a time. Test the headline, um, get 300 people to see the ad or 300 people to see the email and test uh, two different headlines and see which one pulls better and then eliminate the one that, that um, pulled the worst and and then go and test the next variable test the image right um, and I'll keep going on this actually on a little rant I'm feeling good about this stuff so um, the next thing you want to do you can test the body copy you can test the call to action but probably the next easiest thing to do is to test the image and this is super easy so um, if like our grass-fed beef businesses the first one so we have one right now Pablo Creek beef that it's a high-end steak um, box so it's a thousand dollars a month for ten steaks but our other beef businesses, um, the Cowshare, Whisper River Farms, um, those other ones, they, um, our primary audience that we were targeting were, were moms, um, to be very specific, I mean very broad. Like we, we actually had really narrowed it down so we knew what their, their behaviors were, their online behaviors, where they spent their time, the type of sports that their kids played, um, the zip codes that they lived in, the neighborhoods they lived in, whether they owned or rented, what kind of cars they drove, how much um, annual home income they had, uh, or combined income in the home. So all sorts of things, uh, food buying behaviors, like where they shopped for groceries, how often they shopped, um, what percentage of the groceries they bought online versus offline, how frequently they went to the store, whether or not they would use like um, curb pickup at Walmart or Smith's or, or Costco. Um, so anyways, but so broadly speaking though, we were targeting moms with small children at home. So, um, or children that were in school, in high school and, and under. 
And um, so the, one way that we would test an image, right, to find the, the image that worked the best is um, if you are targeting moms, uh, a really wonderful type of image to use is an image where the mom is in the home and she is having fun with her children. Um, that is really going to resonate with that audience of moms because often mothers feel underappreciated because as, as fathers, as husbands, um, we don't show them how much we appreciate them, you know? And it's just a difference in communication most, more than anything. We don't communicate verbally as, as maybe as, as well as we could um, with the women we have in our lives, our, our wives. But uh, so an image of a mother enjoying her time with her children, maybe like cooking with her children or playing with the children, playing kickball with their kids, you know, a coloring book with the kids, even going for a walk with the kids, playing basketball with the kids, um, you know, braiding her little girl's hair. Like there, there's just, there are some of these kind of tested, tried and true images that pull much higher than other images. Um, to give you another example, if you are doing a promotion with a CrossFit gym or to a, to like moms who are really into working out or into fitness or into Zumba or are runners or whatever, the image then would be of a, if you're targeting moms who run, the image would be like a mom lacing up her tennis shoes, um, you know, next to, next to like the mud room where all the other kids shoes are. Okay. Cause that image tells a story. That image tells the story that the, that this woman is a mother, that she is a runner and that all the shoes are still there, and so the kids are probably still in bed. And so she's getting up early to go for a run. And that's the life of a mom. And we wanna celebrate that, and that image does celebrate it by validating the sacrifices that, that mothers make, right, in order to care and provide for their, their family and raise their children. And it's difficult, and it's challenging, and like it's a celebratory image of mothers. And so you use that in your image on your Facebook ad to target um, moms, you know, who are runners and that thing is going to pull really high. Another great one or, or great way to think about this is if you're targeting, let's say, um, well, I mean, I, I think you get the point. I don't need to go into that too much more. So if you're targeting moms who, who do CrossFit or, or an ad at a CrossFit gyms, um, then yeah, like a mom doing, uh, you know, some CrossFit workouts, right? Like, um, so anyways, I won't go into that too much, but I guess I did. I hope that was valuable. Um, We've talked about a lot, a lot more than I expected to in this video. So uh, please go try these things, right? It's the small things done consistently that yield the outsized returns to your business that absolutely can change everything. And we just have to get out of our own way. We just have to get out of our own heads and into our bodies. And if that means like I do every day going for a walk and keep in mind, like I've been up since well before the sun was up and I already worked out for an hour at the gym. And, um, but I've just realized that I need to stay out of my head as much as possible if I'm to be effective, if I'm to be efficient, if I'm to be productive and do the, the most important things and do them well, then I need to stay out of my head. There's nothing in there but sorrow and trouble and doubt and fear and all the reasons why the things that I wanna do will fail or that I shouldn't do them or someone else is better at them. Um, but when I get into my body and I move around and I, and I walk around and I lift my head up and lift my chin and kind of, you know, smile and take deep breaths, it changes everything. It absolutely, are, it, it, it alters our physiology in a way that makes it, um, that helps us believe in our, our capacity to do the things that we need to do to move our businesses forward, to have the results for, our, for ourselves and our families that we want. So please go implement this stuff in your business. If you have questions, as always, send them to me. Direct message on Instagram at grassfedmarketing or email cam at grassfedmarketing.org. All right, see you guys.